Hi, this is Bobby Brown, and welcome to another fucking podcast. You kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima hula hoops and Pac-Man video games, don't you see people today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds? See, son, old legends never die. They just lose weight. It's like a legend and an out of work bum with a lot of life. Hello, you crazy dead fucker! Body time! Hello, Hollywood! Hello, world! Hello, my loyal minions! It is good to see you, and as always, good to be seen. I am Izzy Presley, and this is Metal Edge Magazine presents another fucking podcast. And we got a great show lined up for you today. We have, oh, god damn, a weekend that we're all recovering from. <laughs> uh, my. My uh, partner in crime here, Mr. Paul Gargano from Metal Edge Magazine. Good day. I, I, I appreciate your energy because I'm lacking it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the almighty Red Bull for that. I, I literally Ooh. almost grabbed one. I almost grabbed one. I'm like, I don't need an excuse to be awake at 11 o'clock tonight. I want to be asleep. Oh. But yeah, it was. Uh, I literally had a business meeting. And the first thing the guy said to me when I walked in, he goes, you look like shit. And I'm like, really? Man, I even showered for this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Rainbow 50th anniversary party will do it every single time. So, yes, that was you know what? The 47th anniversary, the 48th, the 49th, yep. they all did it. The 50th yep. just did it to a whole nother level. Yeah, we're all every, like, oh my God. Every single fucking time. But, anyways, uh, joining us this week from Skid Row, a man who I met a long time ago that neither of us remember because they were <laughs> <laughs> in Iowa. Ames, Iowa, I believe it was. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you were that guy. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, totally. Ames, Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scotty, Scotty told me stories that, like, on that tour, Ace, uh, Rachel Bull and welcome. Good day, sir. Hey, man. What's up? Yeah. What's happening? Uh, dramatic build up. <laughs> dramatic yeah. build up. Uh, Scotty was telling me stories that uh, Ace would come and, like, pour a bottle of Jack in your cooler. Uh, a bottle of, uh, uh, no, like a can of Pepsi. He'd okay. pour in the cooler, then he'd fill his can up with whatever booze we had there. Oh. Uh, but but it, he would just pour it into the, he'd have his back towards us and he'd just pour it into the clean ice. <laughs> and it's like, and it'd be like, it looked like this. So how are you guys doing? You guys all right? Okay. You guys are good? Okay, I'll see you later. And then he'd walk out with a, a can full of vodka. Oh my <laughs> so, God. Yeah. Was he in full makeup, full full costume when he was doing this? Uh, no. Well, he, well a, a couple times he came in and he had like the uh, like the the unitard on underneath yeah. in his boots, and then he had a robe, and his robe had big pockets, so he. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he'd have three Pepsi's. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you, you just hear the vodka, the jack on glow, glow, glow into the can. <laughs> And we're all looking at each other like this is the best thing ever. Like this, this is a story for grandkids if we ever have them, you know. Oh wow! <laughs> that was so much fun that tour, though, man. Oh. They they treated us great, and everyone was really cool to us, and it, it was a blast. And being a Kiss fan, man, just yeah, yeah. I don't know how many shows we did. I think uh, almost ninety shows with them, maybe, but uh, maybe more. It could have been more, but uh, it was a lot, and we were only supposed to do one leg and then they kept us on for pretty much the whole tour it was a blast man being a kiss fan and just right. yeah, gene simmons is the reason i play bass and just to yeah. watch that every night it's just awesome man <laughs> Dude, what was it like it, like being the kiss geek and then all of a sudden you're around these guys because they're you know without makeup for all these years and all of a sudden bam here they are you're on tour with them and you sing <laughs> there they are it's like yeah. oh, there they are <laughs> yeah i know and it was crazy because you know you see him during the day and yeah. it was paul gene ace and peter then at night it was the demon star. you know they come <laughs> yeah. they come walking out of their their makeup room and all of a sudden it's just like the little you know the kid in you just like holy shit i can't believe this is happening this is so cool and the best part <laughs> would always be paul is a really really funny guy right and he would just say he had the most offbeat driest sense of humor and when he'd be that way dressed in makeup and seven and a half feet tall 
it made it all the better you know just maybe the joke wasn't really that funny but just looking at him like that yeah it just made it great it made it great but we, uh, we had was, such a blast epic, on yeah. that day. yeah it was, it was so killer now, there, do you ever do you ever get um i'm trying to say this politely i don't mean it in a mean way but you know we've all been on the road before to some extent or another do you get to a point where you just you don't even need to see kiss anymore or because it's kiss you like you want to watch it every night yeah i watched every night except for two because we did we did a double uh when we played dallas i believe we uh did kit play with kiss and then shot across town and played uh that place that's not there anymore um oh the something bowl anyway we played we played across town there and then another time we played Phillips Arena in Atlanta. And then the same night we played at Masquerade. So that was the only two that I missed. Okay. Otherwise, I saw every Otherwise single you're one watching of them. Every night, yeah, right? every yeah. single one, man. I don't know. Right. I'll never forget. Um, I was with our guitar tech back then, Brett, and he uh we got really stoned and we went and watched him. And then watching Gene uh, during the bass solo spitting blood, and his he was on all the jumbotrons, and I'm just like <laughs> This is the coolest. This is the best weed I've ever smoked. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It was, it was so great. It was so great. And the green lights underneath them. I'm like, yeah. I've never seen anything like this before. And Brett turns to me and goes, you've watched every show. I go, yeah, uh, I've never seen it like this. Never seen it like this. <laughs> yeah. It was I, great. I, I had a similar experience with Roger Waters. I had to review it. The first time I saw the Dark Side of the Moon tour, I was like, I, I had to, I was reviewing it for Reuters. So I'm like, I had to be, I wouldn't even drink. I was like dead sober. And yeah. I came home and I said to my wife, if I ever have the chance to see this show again, I will not be sober. <laughs> I will like, I, I will be, my mind will be on another. And it was so funny. It was like clockwork. Two days later, they announced that he's headlining Coachella. Oh so, no. Yeah, I was on, I was on Jupiter when um, nice. he did Coachella. It, and it was like, amazing. Cause I was like, as many yeah. times as you've heard Dark Side of the Moon, yeah. watching him in a completely different state of mind play it, you're just going, this is the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, yeah. And the crazy thing is you put Pink Floyd on it and you, the, whether you smoke or not, you feel stoned as soon as you, you put so, it on. Yeah. And so when you do actually get stoned and listen to him or watch him, it, it just goes into hyperdrive, man. <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Like he's singing to just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I yeah. felt like walking out of the Doors movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> why? Because it was the Doors. Yeah, pretty, yeah, much, exactly. pretty much. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you were gonna say that's what you felt like walking out of the Rainbow last night. <laughs> oh, that was too. <laughs> Oof. Oh, that was a night. Have you guys been to LA lately? Because we were talking before we went live about. It. I feel like it's. I feel like I haven't yeah. seen you since I left New York. I know. Two decades I, ago, I, you, I can't. I, yeah, we've been through LA and we played there a few times. But how long have not, you lived there now? Twenty years. Shit. Then, then we yeah. probably we, we had to see each other at one point. Yeah, or at some point. It's just I don't. I don't yeah. Like, do you usually like? Have you come through? Do you do the whiskey? Uh, it's been a long time since we played the whiskey. Okay. Man, it's been a long time since we played LA proper. Actually, right. we've done stuff around it, but um yeah we haven't been in la la in a while okay so it's not just me all right no <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me <laughs> so i mean one of the things i've i'm fascinated with and we'll jump right into this like i manage drowning pool and mm -hmm. they've been through a number of singer changes yeah and it's like there's, there's there's a whole psychology around that and it's fascinating when you guys just you just changed vocalists Mm -hmm. um what do you, what do you look for when you're looking for that do you do you guys do you look for just the authentic reproduction of what people expect to hear do you look for like chemistry at this point above and beyond everything like what's, well, what's the checklist like man someone that could that you know obviously knows the old catalog um yeah. it was it was a bit of a different situation this time but um yeah you know just just someone that that hopefully we vibe with you know mm -hmm. um in, in the case with eric everything happened really suddenly um we were in, in the position where we're like wow okay we got to get a new singer and it, eric the heat had toured with us um mm -hmm. for those who don't know he was in a band called heat from uh, sweden and they were phenomenal um and they toured with us and i heard his voice from the dressing room i was like holy crap who is that yeah. and somebody said one of the crew guys like oh it's heat 
And I was like, oh man. So I went out and I, I went by the monitor board and watched them. And I was like, wow, I, I got to have a do a side project with this guy or something, you oh, know, because yeah. with me, when there's downtime, I hate it. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like calling friends. Hey, let's put, the, let's do a video. Let's, let's, you know, let's write songs. Yeah. Let's get to whatever. I cannot sit still. So I'm like, I, he was always in the back of my mind. And then when we got to the point that we were at, uh, I, I told the guys, I go, man, look at, and it just so happened that on his Instagram account, he demoed 18 in life. Oh. And there's a real, there's a story behind that goes with that. That's just absolutely incredible. So anyway, he demos it and I send it to the guys and they're like, oh, wow. Okay. Is, do you think you'll be into it? I, I'm like, I know as much as anybody does, you know? Yeah. So um, I just, I just, sent him i didn't even have his number so you know thanks to instagram i uh, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I, I i sent him a, a message and i said hey man it's rach from skids um you know love the cover because i did and he did a whole bunch of other stuff like rainbow in the dark and yeah and, uh, born on the bayou which is like one of my favorite oh, creedence wow. songs and he did like a, a rock version of it that was great him and his friend jonah so um anyway we we just started talking and and uh you know, talking through Instagram. And I said, Hey man, here's my email. I want to just run a couple things by you. So it just came to uh, a conversation that we had on zoom and we sent him a couple songs, new songs with, uh, you know, uh, guide vocals on it and said, be you do what you do, mm -hmm. do Eric Grunwald, you know? Mm -hmm. And he, he did the two songs within, I think 32 hours and sent them back. And <laughs> I played it for the guys and we all snapped. We're just like, well, okay, <laughs> but let, let's just see if he, you know, cause he has, he had a new project called new horizon. He still, he still has a project and we didn't know what his situation was with that. We knew he wasn't in heat anymore, but mm -hmm. so we, we, we think, and I just got on a zoom said, yeah, you know, would you like to sing on the record? Oh yeah. And there's one more question. Would you like to join, <laughs> join the band? <laughs> Oh, almost forgot about that you know almost forgot about that one yeah so we're like would you like to join the band and when i said it he looked down like this and i could feel the tension coming off of snake because it was coming off of me too i'm yeah. like this this fucking guy is gonna say no he's gonna say no <laughs> and, and and he goes ah sorry yes of course of course he goes i'm just trying to I, i'm just trying to get my head around it. and then that's when he tells us he you know because he won uh, he was on Idol in Sweden, yeah, okay. and I believe 2009 and one. And he said, "He goes, you know, 18 in Life was my audition, right?" And I'm like, "No shit." <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I went and watched it, and you know, it, it was he was a kid, and um, he he did it, and he won, and it's just the most amazing full circle story to be told, yeah. you know. And you and, didn't know you didn't know that going in. I, I knew that he was on Idol, and I knew that he won. I didn't know that his uh, his audition yeah. song was, was a Skid Row song, you know, oh, and, yeah. and just so happens to be our biggest tune. And and uh, so we were all blown away, and we're like, wow, th this this is meant to happen. Mm -hmm. That you know, he, he doesn't sacrifice animals, does he? <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> it's just like, so so um, you know, we, we just talked to him and he's like, he told us his situation and, and any kind of obligations he had or didn't have. And, and we're like, dude, that's, that's totally, this yeah. all totally works out. If you want to do this, we're going to send you the rest of the album and we'll send you. And he, he was just knocking it down, man. And he'd send it to us and we're like, okay, change this part. And Nick Raskulinix, our producer, of course, that's what I mean by we, you know, and you know, send it to Snake and I and Nick and, and we'd listen to it like, OK, do you try this and this and that. And he's just like, hey, man, don't be afraid to hurt my feelings. Just say what you like. You know, this is something right. that you, you guys are creating. And I just want to make it the best I could make it. And that's the thing that hooked us. Not, I shouldn't say hook. That sounds like he, we had to be convinced and we didn't have yeah, to. Right, yeah. But he, he his work ethic is so impressive that 
it, it blew us away because that's how the four of us are. It's like, we take a lot of pride in what we do and we're very protective of the brand. And, mm -hmm. and it, man, it, I'm not downplaying anyone else that was ever in this band, but this, this, this it took a long time to get to this point. And yeah. to, to what you were saying, Paul, it's not, we, we just wanted someone to be themselves. And mm -hmm. most of all, own it, own every lyric and yep. on old and especially own and make it your own on the new material. Mm -hmm. And Eric did exactly that. So it was, it, it's a no brainer. And, and, you know, then <laughs> we talked on zoom, we talked about recording in this, we didn't meet him until one, let's see, it was a Tuesday. Our first show was a Saturday. He, we met him in Vegas for the Scorps residency yeah. on, on on a Tuesday, the first day we did two days of rehearsals. Yeah, it was Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we had Thursday off and Friday was the first show. That's when we all got in a room together for the first wow. time. Wow. And to say that it clicked is such an understatement. It's like same sense of humor, mm -hmm. same goofiness, same. I, I don't take myself too serious but my work is serious too. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And it, it just, it just vibed, man. And it just, we went out and the first show, you know, we were all just like, okay, what's going to happen. And we rehearsed the set a bunch of times, but you know, when you get in front of 7,000 people, it's a different yeah. story. Right. And, and man, he just took over and it was awesome. It was so, absolutely awesome. So like when, were you guys both on the monsters of rock cruise at the same time? Do you guys uh, know if they were on that, on that cruise? Well, the, the, they, the, mo the most recent, yeah, not well. No, not no. The one like pre-pandemic. No, the no, no. No, I don't believe we were. Okay, we we've only done uh, one monsters yeah. of rock. Yeah, and yeah. and if if they were, I don't remember because it's not like there's a lot of bands on there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, the, only reason, the, only reason I, the only reason I bring that up is because there was like rumors going like on the on like the 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 group pages that. The reason that he got the gig was because you guys saw him doing it during karaoke on the boat. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> you know? That's funny. He did he did send me video of him doing that though. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great. Now I don't know if we were on the same cruise or not, because we we uh when we do cruises, it's usually we do one show and, and yeah. split on the first port. Uh, but I, I don't honestly I don't know if they were on that cruise or not. Okay. okay. Um so do you think it's just a blessing in disguise that uh, he's able to replicate the, the original classic sound of the band? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's his, it's like he has the same, uh, I don't know that he has the same like tone to his yeah. voice and his yeah. range is the same as our first three records. Right. And so that helps a lot. Um, but his mindset, like, I don't think there's a band that he doesn't listen to. Right, right. And wow. he's just such a fan of music. And it's incredible. Um, one night, here's an example. We, I, we have our, our Bluetooth speaker in the dressing room before the Scorp show. And, I'm, and we're all just picking stuff out off our phones. And uh, he goes, you have any little Richard? And I look at him like, Dude, you get cooler like every minute. <laughs> every time, every time you open your mouth, you get a little bit cooler. So we found little Richard and he was jamming. We, you know, he has an acoustic in the dressing room. He's the first singer we ever had that played an instrument. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And his his just musical ability is incredible. His his just his taste for music is so vast. And that's just like the four of us, you know, yeah. we listen to everything. So it, it was, uh, it, as you can see, I'm really excited about it. And it's a really, it's a really, it's a really good fit. I, how no, did that's, you, that's so, awesome. so like, how did you guys react, feel and react when you heard him singing the new stuff and he's, he's able to put that old school vibe onto it. Did you feel like a resurgence kind of like pulling you back to, you know, what the band originally did sound like? uh in a sense yeah we we just liked it like what i said he was feeling it you know yeah. and and he he you know he's just seeing the lyrics for the first time and a couple times he asked me he goes so 
this song can be taken two ways. And I was like, yeah, we were right in metaphor a lot. I said, what way are you taking it? And he'd say it. And he, whenever he asked that question, he was always thinking the same way we were when we wrote it. Nice. Nice. Which is really difficult, you know, because a lot of times the singer writes the lyrics and, and he owns it, but he just came in. That was the most important thing. And, and so the, the, fact lyrics, that the lyrics were done. Lyrics were done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. For, for everything. So he, um, you know, he just came in and he just owned it, man. And it was important to us and his style, because we, we are actually his favorite, one of his favorite bands growing up. He was two when our first record came out, yeah. but his, his, <laughs> his, his friend, his friend from Sweden, who was actually, I think he's going to be 35, Eric, um, his friend from Sweden, who was actually in Vegas, who, who lives in California now was the guy that turned him on to us. And I, I just thought that was so cool. And the dude came to the show to support his bud and we met him yeah. and ha had fun with the guy. And it, it was just, it's a pretty special story when you think about it. Yeah. And, and he, um, so his style, you know, he, he loves Sammy Hagar and he loves all of our original records. So that, that's his wheelhouse, like from, mm -hmm. from back then. And um, so it, it just, it was worked out perfectly for us fantastic that's yeah. so he did so you had the album was done already that was gonna be my i didn't know if he came in and he did his own did, did it, you tweak anything did you have to tweak things or well he, yeah no he put he he took things to a different level the the album cool. the album wasn't complete um so we we had demos that he was referencing you know for melodies and stuff like that because mm -hmm. from our demos to when we started working with nick Raskulinix, stuff changed a lot like Right. A, a, a whole lot you know because nick nick is like a producer's producer old school that part's great that sucks don't ever play that for me again <laughs> write some more write some more shit like this you know what i mean and that's yeah. nick and that's how he works and it works so well for this band to to which is never really a way we did it you know we just all sat in a room except for eric of course because he wasn't yeah, even yeah. in the picture so yeah. he he you know he got nick got on the phone he's like i want you to get this mic and, and this compressor and this and so they kept in close contact from a tech standpoint what i find out after we're done recording and so eric recorded himself he recorded most like all his own vocals and yeah. so what oh, I, wow. I, yeah so what i find out after in, in his home so what i find out after the vocals are all done he's like yeah it's the first time i did that and i go dude i am so glad you didn't tell me that beforehand because i would have no <laughs> hair right now i would just uh, i would be halfway in a grave i would be stressed to death yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean wow. but he, he's he's an amazing dude he just he knows how to get things done like i said like he sees a goal and just aims towards it and that's like the four of us the other four of us so it's just such a perfect fit so and then you it was just jumping right in the fire with the scorp stuff. So you did the scorp dates. Uh, how long? What was it? That was about a month. A month of weekends. Uh, it was it was nine shows in three weeks. Okay, all right. So yeah. it wasn't even a month. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. How'd those go? What was it, what was it like? Did you have you done a residency type situation before? No, no. That was the first time we ever did any. I mean, it's cool. The schedule was really light for Skid Row, you know, and yeah. yeah. Our, our sets were shorter of course because we're opening the show but man the scorps and their whole crew and the, the whole uh staff and crew at uh zappos man they were so cool to us so so cool mm -hmm. and i mean we knew the scorps a little a little bit from when doc used to manage them while he managed us and yeah that was you know that was 30 years ago well, i know you did you did the moscow music peace festival you're yeah. both on that right did you, had yeah. you played with them before other than that or no Nope, nope. And that was the only other time we played. That was the yeah. only time. Yeah. So except wow. for this residency. Yeah. So it was great. Everyone was really cool to us. And we, um, you know, the shows were awesome. Each one got better and better and better and better. And then all of a sudden we're done, you know. Yeah. Um, so we, we start up again next weekend um, in Kentucky. We have a show in Kentucky. Then the following week we have three or four shows uh, ending at M3 um in uh in uh maryland and it's just it's cool because we we had 45 minutes now we're doing our full set and we were actually at sound check we were rehearsing the rest of the set like another mm -hmm. 45 minutes worth of stuff pretty yeah. much 
and uh so it was cool man and it's so funny because like there were songs that are they're they're hard to say some of our songs are hard to sing you know um most of the singers we had yeah then eh, let's leave this one out of the set where that's like eric's favorite song so that's like his warm-up songs i'm like are you a witch <laughs> like what, what is going on and like it's just it's so insane so we're like yeah sure dude and we're all looking at each other like this is a song all the other guys used to pass on type of thing you know but <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's really cool and, and i don't mean that to cut anybody up but it, right, this, right. this kid is iron man it's great yeah no, that's that's fantastic so you've got now i'll be at the m3 show i'm looking forward to that because like, cool. i think it's i think it's been over a decade since i've seen this kid row <laughs> yeah. um it, it's just it's it's why i'm like i don't think you've been to la recently but the uh what, what will your set be like there you're gonna do you'll get an hour a little bit over. uh i think we get an hour and 15 or an hour and 10 something like that yeah hour and 10 70 minutes okay so yeah we're it'll be packed with with a lot of cool stuff um you know we're by the time it comes around to that we'll have probably have more songs rehearsed and mm -hmm. you know we'll we'll just pick it out see how they feel are you on are you playing any new material live yet or is it all yes we're, we're playing the first, yeah we're playing the first single we actually did it in las vegas and uh it tested i say tested it tested, yeah, it, really, <laughs> it tested really well in the uh transient market you know <laughs> but, so yeah it was uh it went over really good and um you know it, it's cool to play new stuff and it's cool to have a song that that a new song that people are are, yeah. are getting and and yeah. they're 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 getting into and it's just you know that kind of stuff hasn't happened to us in a long time i see stuff overseas like being number one on playlists and um, radios and i'm like what the <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, cool right? you know well so, it's, it's got to be tough i mean for a band that's a little bit longer in the tooth that and you've got all the classic material i'm not, not i'm not trying to call you guys old but you know it's yeah. like you know, you guys came out in the fucking eighties. Yeah, but you're not all classic. 35. No, exactly. <laughs> no, but you know, you've got all this classic material that, you know, that's what everybody wants to hear. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have these new songs like, well, fuck, we got this new record coming out. we got to play these new songs, but it usually sends people to the pisser. Yeah. So how do you, how do you balance that? Well, right now they only know one song because right. the album's right. not out. So it was an easy balance. We play right. that song. Um, and hope it goes over and it did and people people are into it um you know it's just it's just such a classic skid row type song yeah the gang's all here and it, it um it, it it's connecting it's connecting with people our older fans uh you know and the new ones so it it's pretty good for guys that have been around as long as we have it's a pretty good yeah. feeling yeah i feel like i feel like the 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 um, audience is starting to come back around a little bit too, because we, we went through this um, era, I'm trying to be delicate about how I say this. Um, we went through this era where people just wanted to hear the hits and that was it. And they really didn't care about new music, but I feel like the crowd is getting, and I'll, I'll include myself as part of the audience. You know, we want to hear new music now too, because it's, you know, we, we could listen to this stuff all day. You know, the hits we could hear all day, but it's like, we want to hear what's coming next. And I feel like the, the quality has gotten better from a lot of bands too. I mean, there's just been a lot of, you know, I think we went through a, in the late nineties, early two thousands, there was some, some, a lot of bands just kind of dialed in their new albums because they're like, Oh, we're not going to get radio play. And I think we've come back around to this point where people aren't expecting radio play. They're like, let's just write a great record. Yeah, that's very true. You know, because I mean, we, we are proud of a lot of like most of the stuff we did. Um, Past the first, yeah, past the first three, <laughs> past the first three albums. I mean, man, there's stuff on the first three albums where I still hear, and I'm like, oh, why would we put that song out? But that's always gonna happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you do. You, and, and part of it is like, okay, like for a band like us, that happens to a lot of bands. You just people just aren't paying attention anymore, and they don't yeah. really find you as relevant as you find yourself. You know. Yeah. You, you know what you're capable of, but you need everyone to be on board. And for a lot of bands from our era, nobody was on board, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, the uh, So, you know, you, you write stuff and it's like, well, at least we have 10 songs. I'm not saying that's exactly what we did, but there there yeah. were times where we're like, you know, let, let's put an album out, just 
so people know we're still around. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe there are five out of 10 songs that are great, you know, but mm -hmm. now, nowadays, I think if you want people to take you serious that you, you have to, if you have the opportunity, you have to take it to put out an album with yeah. no filler, you know, yeah. uh, enter Nick Raskulinix and where he said, just out, we were out at dinner one night, <laughs> him and I are, are his wife, my girlfriend and a bunch of other people. He just goes, let's do this fucking skid row record. And I was like, ah. all right. <laughs> so that, so that you knew him going in, is that how you, I was going to ask? Yeah. Yeah. Was... He, he, he's my neighbor. He lives okay. close. Um, uh, at the time he did not but yeah, I just met him through friends, you know, uh, uh, and we hit it off. Uh, and you know, we were just, we just talked about doing a record and I'm like, dude, do you seriously want to do a record with Skid Row? He's like, hell yeah, man. He goes, let's get, if you got the right songs. And like, like I said, he went through everything. We brought him everything and he just, he, he was a fan uh, uh, of us when uh, he was growing up. I mean, he's not that much younger than me, but um but he was a fan of the band so it, it, I, I i try to explain to people what it's like when you're a fan of the band you the all, all their songs are a photograph in time and it's it's burned in your brain when you're in the band you just stray away from that point and because you wrote those songs so long ago and it's real you get further and further away from your roots mm -hmm. and it's really hard to to retrace your steps at times and nick was the guy that he just said straight up to us he goes it sounds like you guys are afraid to be skid row and we it just the room went silent and from that point on for me anyway yeah my there, it was a switch in my brain and mm -hmm. all the stuff kept coming back and his knowledge of music and his retention for like parts and you're talking like we rehearsed a song and maybe like four days later rehearse it again and there have been three other songs in between and he'll be like hey rach you changed that bass part go back to the original one you were playing like two days ago i'm like what what was it <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he records everything every rehearsal yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know it but it's really cool and and he was the guy that that uh, i i got to give most of the responsibility to him for for kind of slapping us around and saying you're skid fucking row yeah be, be skid row and so right. yeah, like, kind of like just like you're looking for from the singer, you want a singer to own it. Like yeah. you guys need to own it too. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. 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 He, he had to make us uh, just rethink uh, right. the, the way we do things. And I asked him, I go, can I ask you a question? He's like, what? I go, did you say the same thing to Rush? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he goes, I, I'm not having this conversation. <laughs> no, he didn't, he didn't say that. But, but I did ask him that. <laughs> well, I did. I think that's one thing that's important about, you know, bands of your genre working with a producer because, I you know, there's a lot of bands that'll just, oh, we just record this. You know, we didn't have anybody work on it with us. We just like, yeah, this is what we felt, whatever. But yeah. you need somebody there to go, dude, that doesn't sound like fucking Skid Row. What the fuck yeah. is that? That's right. You know? That's absolutely right. And we never realized we needed that. We yeah. never realized because when, when you do it for as long as we've been doing it and we all have studios in our homes, yeah. it's yeah. just like, yeah, we got this, you know, but, but chances are you don't got it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Um, you may have, you know, we write uh, and, and whatever, but to you, it, it's for a lot of bands, it's very important to have a producer that is creative and mm -hmm. Nick is right. a creative force, no doubt. He's working with um, one of my partners of one of his bands right now, uh, Black Smoke Trigger. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, he's working with them right now. Yeah, I think he was cutting drum tracks today, he said. Probably, yeah. yeah. Down in Nashville, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. at Rock, Rock Falcon Studios. Rock Falcon. So were you, you mentioned earlier that you just, you don't like being down and you're just like, you know, you always need stuff to do. Hey, let's do a video. Let's do, what was COVID like for you? I mean, did you just, it was an insanity <laughs> well i i started a soap company <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah an all natural so it was an idea i had for like two years and i was like well i just never really had the time to to pull the trigger on it so i'm like well trademarks are done everything's done and i have a, a dear friend that lives down the street she has a soap company i was like show me the ropes show me how to do this and 
she showed me. And so I'm like, cool. I built a website. I started a company figuring it last a couple of months, or maybe I'd sell like 10 bars of soap or whatever. Yeah. I put up 40. It went in like a couple hours. I'm like, Oh, wow. okay. All right, cool. Let me do this again. And then, Oh, what's an email blast? <laughs> Boop. Ding, 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 ding. I'm like, okay. So now, now it's two years, it was two years, actually this month. Wait, what's today? Two years yesterday, I started the company. Oh wow! Damn, and and it's still going. And I'm a I'm a soap business owner. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some like Skid Row soap on a rope or <laughs> everybody says that. Rock. Like, yeah, there's got to be some. Everything. There's got to be something there, yeah. right? <laughs> it, it's called it's called Dirty Rocker Soap Company. Oh, soap, yeah. nice. Okay. Soap yeah. to the grind. Yeah, soap to the grind. A slave to the grime. <laughs> <laughs> See now, now do you do you make all the soap yourself? Um, you know, we make some here, but my friend that I was telling you about, who lives right down the street, she uh, she makes some of it, and but it's all kept like within friends and family and stuff. But other than that, yes, COVID drove me nuts. There was I did all the stuff on the to do list, like yeah. in the first like in the first week. Yeah, I was like. like yeah, I, I built a picnic table out of pallet wood. It's like, <laughs> what am I doing? What what has my life come to, man? And, and so, uh, yeah, so I, I was going pretty nuts. I, I was, at times I was selfishly enjoying the time off, but I'm like, I would like it to be for a better reason than for what's going on here. And just yeah. all, yeah, and, and just like everyone else, all the unknowns of yeah. when it was going to stop. I remember telling my sister, I go, I give it three weeks. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, yeah we're just, about right. We're going yeah. to we're gonna flatten the curve. You, you have just, you'll have just enough time yeah. to make a picnic table out of pallets. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. we're going to be through this, yeah. Yeah, so I could have <laughs> opened up a pallet furniture store by now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> did you write, did you guys write the album during COVID? Um, so uh, Some of it was written already, but then there were times uh, where Snake and I, uh, would get I mean because how long was travel banned for it was banned for a while so yeah. we would just get on zooms and write and then send each other ideas and you know send each other uh, the the pro tools tracks and and we just work on it and then bop it out to Scotty hey man throw a solo on this and some guitar and, and that's what we did it was mainly drum machine you know uh, easy drummer uh, program but you know just for demos and yeah. then uh yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But we we stayed, you know, we do a lot of Zoom. I mean, isn't that what put Zoom on the map pretty much? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Pretty much. So yeah. So um we 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 made sure that the five of us kept in touch and we that our crew, we all kept in touch and we'd have like a monthly Zoom with all of us. And like I'm talking like our crew over here, our crew in Europe, we'd have like sometimes 20 guys on a Zoom or yeah, 15 to 20 guys on a Zoom, and we just get ripped on a yeah. Zoom. And <laughs> and uh, you know, other guys, the next thing you know, the dog is, is just there, and the other guy left, you know, whatever. So, yeah, but but you know, we we did what we could to keep our sanity and and to stay creative. I think I think Izzy, we had a couple Zooms where um, yeah. someone someone will be passed out in their Zoom thing. Oh yeah, like someone will be like, "I'm getting up to go to the bathroom," and then you just see them fall down on a couch. Yeah. And like, oh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> like twenty minutes yeah. later, they get up and their hair is just poof. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, it looked like um, uh, uh, well, God, what was that movie, Doctor Heckle and Mister Jive, or something like and that? <laughs> um, that's good. <laughs> Oh, that's so uh, funny, man. I, is that a serious movie? Or are you screwing no, that up wasn't, Dr. Jekyll it was and Mr. Doc Hyde that badly? No, it was Dr. Heckle, Dr. Heckle and Mr. Jive. Ah, I've never heard of it. No, actually, no, that was the one where the guy, when, when he did the blow, it was like this magic blow, and it turned him into like this 70s disco guy. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> yeah, I, I vaguely How do remember I not this. know this movie? I vaguely remember this. <laughs> Wait, Doctor Heckle and Mister Jive? Jive. I believe yeah. that was the name of it. I don't, hold on. I can I can tell you exactly. Nope, I'm looking it up when we get off. No, because I remember I, I, I had the picture as my uh, as one of my as one of my uh, uh, screenshot gimmicks at the top of your Facebook thing. Uh. <laughs> Whatever the hell that's called. Um. Um, profile picture no not profile Maybe. the one on top oh header i don't know i, I, don't know. I haven't header, been on face I've... i haven't been on facebook in so long lucky 
I know. I yeah, dumped it. I can't stand it. I dumped nope. it. No, 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 no. So, uh, are you going to be spending time at M three? Are you going to be able to watch any of the other days, or are you just there? We for one we day? we have three show or two shows uh, prior to that. Three, two or three, yeah. Anyway, we roll in Sunday at about okay. noon and just kind of throw and go. Okay. Yeah, and then we split out the next day. It looks a great lineup this year. I was really excited yeah. about it. That was why, yep. and that was wanted to kind of that's why it was a good week to have you on because you're playing m3 so it's kind of yeah. m3 but yeah I, I was excited to see stuff like blue oyster cult on there i'm like really excited to see them yeah um it's really cool uh yeah so, there was a few uh, lizzie borden's playing too right lizzie borden oh, God, Daryl. Awesome. yeah yep um i'm yeah. excited about piercy yeah there's there's good stuff on there yeah yep, yep no and, uh, isn't somebody that we're talking to right now hosting this thing Mr. Gargano, um, I I might um, I might introduce a few bands. There that, you go. That might be on, that might be on the table. <laughs> I know Tommy London is going to be there as well. Yeah. So yeah, there might be some shenanigans. I love Tommy. Tommy's um, the best. He's the Tommy, absolute best. Tommy is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tommy is. He's just got like just such great energy as a fan. It's just so I I, I met him for the first time in the city, and I. I think I spent three hours drinking with him and was like, I gotta drive home, I gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He uh he yeah, I, I last time I saw Tommy was in New York at Arlene's grocery. We have a mutual friend that uh bartends there and yeah. we just uh we had a blast with him and his fiance. We had so much fun. Yeah, it was really good. so then you've got coming up after this, you've got the tour with Warren and Winger, right? Yeah, is that a full uh, tour or is that like it, it's a it's a lot of shows. Uh, okay. I'm not sure how many off the top of my head, but it's called the Live to Rock tour, and it's us Warrant <laughs> Winger, well, us Warrant Winger, and uh, sometimes Quiet Riot. I think sometimes Alita Ford is on the front end of it. Um, it should it, it's getting a great response, and uh, it's perfect timing to have a new single out. You know, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be you know they're all we're all old friends. You know and when you could do something with all your buds, it makes it that much more special, you know? And I mean, God, we've known the winger guys and we were label mates with winger and then the warrant guys we've known forever, you know? And, and actually Paul Taylor from uh, winger, he co-wrote the gangs all here with snake and myself. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. He goes, I have a riff that sounds kind of skid row. He played it for me. I was like, Oh my God, this is oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah. 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 He's a, well, he's an amazing songwriter. It's it's so great with, I mean, it's such a great package. And then you start looking, you start thinking over the years, like, so there's been so many permutations of all these bands out there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just great to see, you know, it's not a podcast until my dog starts barking at the mailman. <laughs> Well, I, I have my office door closed because you'd be seeing my cat's ass like the whole time. We were on it. It, just, it looked like this. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, he just literally is going to bark until the mailman disappears. All right. Well, you know, it's fine. Stop. Stop. Do you like, but, uh, do you like getting out there with bands that are kind of out of your genre? I do. I do. Uh, like a lot of festivals that like the eclectic festivals in Europe. Um, I think it's really cool. I think it's a great experience for fans too. Um, you know, who may not be into like bands like us and they're, yeah. they're watching their favorite band and then like, Oh wow, these guys are pretty cool. Or yep. Now I know why I don't like them, you know, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think, I think it's, <laughs> I, th I think it's really cool to, to be with bands that, that are not, your usual not the usual lineup there there's a um, a festival uh, uh in norway called carmageddon i believe that's what it's mm -hmm. called and we played it once uh we're playing it again this year this time we're headlining one of the days and it's um it's very metal like very like the yeah. logos that yeah, logos look like tree branches yeah, yeah, tree branch, or or if you peel the skin out of a leaf and it just has yeah. like all the veins yeah. left in, yeah, and, and then you flip it upside down. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's it's like a lot of bands like that, and we were like, okay, uh, maybe maybe we'll cut the ballads out, you know, maybe we cut out eighteen <laughs> and this and that, and then uh, I asked the promoter, I said, should we cut 
I think it was a promoter. It was a promoter? I, I don't know. Anyway, I asked someone, uh, you know, the in, in charge, um, and I said, "Should we cut the balance out?" He's like, "Only if you're idiots. <laughs> just, <laughs> just leave him in." He goes, "This it might be a lot of metal bands, but this is a rock and roll crowd." And he was right. And we went out. We, we were direct support to uh, man. I forget who the band was. I'm sorry, I forget. It was quite a few years ago, and he's just like, "I told you." I told you and it went over great and there was another band called uh hot rods i think that were kind of like almost like heavy rockabilly type stuff but oh, wow. you know not as twangy as rockabilly yeah but, and and they went over they were monsters man they were great and i was like you know what this isn't like the rest of the bands but yeah it was cool and the whole just vibe the whole community like no one cared what kind of music you played everyone was a very cool music community vibe backstage i mean i i think it's i i just think that in america it's not like that because i just don't think a lot of the fans a lot of the fans are just a lot more opinionated um it's just it's because you don't get that out here yeah i know you, i know what you mean though yeah. but we get funny drowning pool are headlining a metal festival in december in belgium and it's mm -hmm. all corpse paint bands and they're like what why do they want us <laughs> yeah <laughs> what are we supposed to do <laughs> yeah so they're gonna be saving up all the shit to throw by the time we go <laughs> on <laughs> that's exactly what they were like they're like oh no yeah here's what, like, oh, Paul, here's what you do for that particular festival change the name to morbid death stomp <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah man it uh yeah it's crazy you know there there's a festival down here called the pilgrimage which is pretty eclectic um nothing too heavy like i don't think bands even as hard rock as we are play but i i, I can't remember there's a lot of bands on there mm -hmm. but that that's as close as i remember uh i could think of at least in america to to something eclectic i think doing that is uh is important man I, I think that just hearing a bunch of different genres of music in a day or in a weekend mm -hmm. i think i think it's important it's important to the music business it's important to the bands um and you know fans like i said fans may get turned on to someone they never thought they would like in a million years that because, that's what i yeah, yeah that's what i used to love about coachella back when it started because mm -hmm. they'd have like nine inch nails one night or tool one night and then they'd have paul mccartney the next night see and that's a bunch that's of awesome. and there's a bunch of stuff i would never ever cross the street to see but right. you then you have you know you realize, oh, I don't hate Radiohead, or I don't hate Coldplay, or I don't yeah. hate Florence and the Machine. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, exactly. You just, it's all the stuff that you would never see Rage Against the Machine and Florence and the Machine on the same bill, but at Coachella yeah. it worked. Yeah, I yeah. I never thought I could get into DJs until I wandered into the dance tent there and was like, oh my God, Crystal Method's amazing. It was just, <laughs> yeah, just, see? And, yeah. Um, it's like, yep. yeah, it, it, it should happen more often for sure, I think yeah but now coachella doesn't do that anymore but yeah but it's <laughs> but very cool when does the album come out what's what's the plan for the album uh there's uh october 14th is the okay. release date okay. we're, we're um we're working with a, an amazing label out of germany called ear music who also uh, has alice cooper um deep purple and a bunch of really great bands i mean growing up listening to alice cooper and deep purple um it's it's pretty cool to be on to say yeah, yeah we're la we're label mates yeah what's up, <laughs> what's up? you know what i mean it is really cool and they, they they get it they get us and they they actually have heat too they have heat now and they have heat when it had heat when eric was in the band okay and um they're they're very happy when we told them that uh we were getting a new singer and they asked who it was they they were really psyched that it was eric so they're, they're a great label. They understand us. They have great ideas. They have fresh ideas. And um, yeah, it, it, it's to be in the business as long as we have and to be this excited yeah. about things is, is a, uh, it, it's something like just seeing, you know, Scotty Hill, the guy that, that 
he doesn't get excited about a lot. <laughs> but man, to see him excited and just just knowing that everyone in the band is that excited is uh, it's pretty amazing, man. It, it's really really amazing. That's that's great. You know the. Izzy, have you read nothing but a good time yet? Um, have I have it? not read it yeah. yet. Um, but it, it's on the. I, I think I have to get a magnifying glass because it's not in old man print. Uh, <laughs> I, I was I, I was able to read it, and I've had six eye surgeries, so all right. Well. I, I, so give it a shot. But oh, <laughs> did you did you read it, Rachel? Have no, not it? yet. I know you're I, in it. Yeah, I have it. It's actually sitting in my studio, and. Uh, that's where I opened it. When he sent me a copy, I opened yeah. it in my studio and it's, it's sitting there. I got a lot of books ahead of it that I've started, but haven't finished. <laughs> I, um, I actually read it because Rich, Rich is the editor for Metal Edge because I don't do, I, I do limited writing because right. management and everything else I do. So, um, but I was like, when, when Rich agreed to come on board, I'm like, I better read it, I better read this book. And it was interesting because I had no interest in reading a book about like the music I covered in Metal Edge for as long as I did. Right, like, right. Exactly. What am I going to, like, why do I want right. to read this? It could be like reading a bunch of articles I wrote, you know? But it was amazing. Like, I learned so much from it. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, it was really, you guys were especially fascinating to me because there wasn't a lot of East Coast. It was so much of the West Coast. And then there was Twisted Sister and Skid Row. Like, you were the two, like, East Coast bands that were really in there. Yeah. You know, which was, which was interesting getting that different perspective because i grew up on the east coast right it, it's so strange how like i can't even tell you how many people just assume we were from la <laughs> and i'm like no we weren't and it's like no no i saw you guys i saw you guys out in like 85 out there i was like we weren't a band in 85 <laughs> man. you know it's just like it, it's that that's a misconception and the fact that i love when people tell me that they saw us touring with ozzy because we've never toured with ozzy we played <laughs> the moscow music peace festival with yeah. ozzy and that yeah. is it yeah and it's like no 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 i saw you in 88 it's like no you didn't no nope, no nope. what, what nope. color pill did you, what color pill did you take that day because yeah. i'm pretty certain you didn't but those are i hear that like you guys were from la and you toured with ozzy a lot we all do and it's just i don't know it's just one of those things or two of those yeah, things. like and if you're from the northeast i don't know that there's anything more insulting than being told you're from la like, I, <laughs> right? I literally it's... i've i've been in la 20 years now and i yeah. went and got a connecticut yeah, i can't see it because i'm a thing but i have a tattoo yeah. of the state of connecticut on my arm the I last love time that. I was a couple that's... months ago because i'm like just no yeah that's i'm great. not from la <laughs> that's so funny yeah I, they're, they're, they're two different animals man i, I can think of one thing more infuriating your pizza sucks <laughs> where in la oh new york oh come on <laughs> come on yeah it's i can't even i i can't even that's just you just going for shock value and, oh no oh no, okay. no oh, why why did you say Derek jeter sucks <laughs> yeah exactly well, exactly yeah. fucking i have all 10 for Derek jeter and the fucking Yankees. because <laughs> they own my minnesota twins so I, of yeah. course we yeah, yeah well yeah I was, oh, every, everybody owns your minnesota twins <laughs> <laughs> i always used to joke and say it was the curse of sal bando who never played for the yankees and is not dead <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, your, your twins are climbing towards respectability that's all right you'll get my, there someday izzy hey, my, Yan got, my yankees two. came out of the gate strong but now they're starting yeah. to stumble damn it. yep 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 the uh and i i don't agree with me i had the worst pizza i was just on the road for a month i had the worst i didn't think there was such thing as really really bad pizza until i had pizza in belvedere illinois and it i literally it like all i could think of was the like in grade school when they would cut the pizza with scissors and put it on your lunch tray like <laughs> yeah. that was better than this yes. uh, <laughs> this makes me want to try that place oh man <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Rachel, is there anything do you guys did I hear correctly? I'm trying to think if Eric told me this. Do you have a coffee coming out or do you have a coffee? We have it out. out. Dead you Sled have it out Coffee. Okay. Yeah, it's called Slave to the Grind. Uh it's ah, with, yeah, see what we did. Yeah. Um uh, de uh through Dead Sled Coffee. It's awesome. We try to hold a whole bunch of combos of different blends and, and of beans and we settled uh on this one, which is really good. And it gives you a nice little pick me up too which is what's the um what's that process like do they send you 
samples. So they, send you, they just send you a bunch of beans and no, they, they sent samples of, of different blends, you know, okay. and said here, what first they asked of what kind of coffee do you guys like? And we're like, nothing like too, you know, uh, too dark of a roast or, you know, uh, or just ones that kind of get you in the back of the throat. We just want something kind of smooth. So yeah. like, okay, we have these few blends and we went through a few different ones. And I believe we, we uh, uh, agreed on the Brazilian and Costa Rican blend, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I like it. I'm, we're, we're all way into coffee, at least mm. four out of five of us are um, way into coffee. And, um, you know, it, it, it was like the perfect fit. And it's a company out of New Jersey, which just kind of made it better because we're all we all use yeah. the word fuck like a comma. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, just, it's just one of those things. We all get along great. Yeah. And, and the Zoom meetings are always a lot of a lot of laughs. So. Uh, yeah. how, how is the extra pick me up put in there? Is the cocaine just like in <laughs> coffee or fucking ward i don't know how, how do they make the extra pick me up yeah you know it's just uh, they, they sneak it in there somehow i'm, I'm, I'm not sure how the process works man i just tasted it that's all you're like i, I yeah. just like to pick me up <laughs> yeah i just like to pick me up yeah so and can people order it through the website yeah, they could order it through the website or right uh, from slave to the grind coffee.com, I believe, and or go straight to dead sled coffee.com. I believe that's what, what it is. But dead sled is the name of the company. Dead sled. I coffee. kind of feel like it, it's like you got to keep asking that, even though at this point, if somebody doesn't know how to Google slave to the grind coffee and figure it out themselves, they probably can't figure out how to buy it anyway. So, yeah, and they don't have a computer. <laughs> 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 it's like okay, i don't know how to do this <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know how to do this how do i how do i make the coffee <laughs> is there so, gonna be are you gonna have another song coming out before the record like is when yeah we're gonna have we're gonna have three more and uh we'll probably do a video or two in there um hopefully um but yeah we we were expecting to you know there was talk about putting another single out soon but the response to the gangs all here has been so well it, it's been really great and the song is so well received that you know um we're just rethinking some battle plans gotcha. yeah you know don't want to rush anything yeah yeah no let's play out that's yeah. awesome uh, i when mean the record, when the record comes out is it going to be uh, obviously cds but are you guys doing vinyl you guys doing, oh yeah doing anything except yeah. sets to we're 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 uh we're doing a few different colors and a few different designs and it's yeah we're actually I was, I'm talking about trying to get a Metal Edge variant also. I'm trying to yeah. do something. I want to do a variant just for Metal Edge. We're going to look into that. Cool. Which right you on. probably haven't heard yet. But yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it, uh, it's really cool. And, and we love this, the label um, and the people that, that are there, Max and Isabel and the rest of the staff. They're, they're just amazing people and just creative, which is, and, fans of music which is yeah. awesome you, you know it's one thing to be uh be an executive at a label that's great but to have an executive that absolutely loves music and can talk music all day long yeah that's 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 a that's a really cool a really cool thing to have that's great yeah fantastic all right uh, izzy do you have anything else um no, not no. Do you want to, you want to explain what that? Did you explain what that backdrop is on air, or did you explain it before we got on air? I think I explained it before we got on air. So on the Monster yeah. Rock Cruise a couple of years ago, maybe four years ago, I think it was uh, during karaoke. Um, uh, a, a fine gal of the establishment um, was a little uh, tipsy about two thirty in the morning, and she accidentally fell onto the the monitor, which is a television, and. Um, <laughs> that was the result and i got a nice polaroid of it and um there it is i feel like i feel like you're in i feel like you're in tron that's exactly what i thought i thought it was tron in the very beginning i was like is that the new tron or is that the old tron i don't really remember that which, but, which tron is that yeah which tron is that but my question is how do you fall on a tv <laughs> um there may or may not been a lot of alcohol involved okay the tv's on the floor it's on the floor 
Oh, so, okay. All right. All right. Because I thought, was it on a wall? And did she like? Did she the, fell the, onto the wall. <laughs> did, the, did the boat pitch really hard or something? And she's <laughs> flying through the air, drunk. You know? If she wasn't that drunk, she would have held onto a pole or something. Yeah. You know? She would have broke the TV. <laughs> all of a sudden, we're all like, yeah, we need somebody to send us video, please, of this. We need to uh, see. Oh, I wish there was video. All right, let's do this rapid, rapid fire. Kiss okay. hotter than hell or dress to kill? Mm. Uh, trust the kill uh destroyer love gun rock and roll over rock and roll over ace peter paul or gene solo records ace and is asylum the best thing they put out after <coughs> the original band broke up uh, i liked animal lives I like that. Animal. Oh, that's a great record. I like that, but I, I also liked Lick It Up. I, th- I thought they still, I, you know, I'd have to say it was, Lick It Up was pretty damn good. Pretty, Lick it up. pretty yeah, I thought that, that was a really good record. I agree. I, I was a big fan of the Revenge album. As long If they would just take God Gave Rock and Roll to you oh, off that you. record, I would be, I, that, like, I love the Revenge record. Yeah, Revenge was great. That that had uh, um, Domino on it. Didn't Domino, it? Yeah. Unholy. Yeah. Unholy, yeah. That, that is, that's a really good record. They had a lot of really good songs a- after, after you know, whatever the, the high point was for them. But, you know, being a Kiss fan, I always went out and bought them. <laughs> I was oh, just yeah. like, yeah, I, and I'd be like, mm. you know, I, I listen to Unmasked. So that says it all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But oh, there oh. actually were some good songs on there too, you know. Well, like Shandy, Shandy rules. <laughs> Shandy's the greatest thing on that record. That's the only thing I can I listen like, to on that record. I always say Unmasked. I like Torpedo Girl. I like Torpedo. I always say Unmasked is the Taco Bell of Kiss records. You don't <laughs> listen to it for a while, like you don't eat at Taco Bell for a while. Then you see the commercial and go, "Oh, that doesn't that doesn't look so bad." Then you go there and you try it, then you remember it's fucking Taco Bell. Yeah, <laughs> same thing with Unmasked. <laughs> That's that's an amazing analogy, man. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. Oh yeah, oh shit, literally after Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or after unmasked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at oh, least boy. you're not pretending like the elder. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, uh... <laughs> I love the way you just drop that in and just try to go right over it. <laughs> yeah. I would, say, I would say, look, you're not getting Fonzie cool points for pretending you like the Elder. It's just not <laughs> happening. People go, what are Fonzie cool points? Like, oh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? You deserve to like the Elder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All did right. You so, guys, spe- uh, real quick, yeah, did, speaking yeah. of the Elder, did you ever hear, um, oh, um, oh, my God, the name of the band is slipping. Uh, they covered I. Um, Oh no, they covered the oath. Uh, uh, what, what's the the band? The female lead singer, really heavy band. Um, um, Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy. Arch oh, I got Enemy. it right. I got it right without looking. They, they wow. covered it. They covered it with Angela singing. Oh wow! The, o- the oath, and okay. it was awesome. It was so oh, good, and it just out. yeah, definitely check it out. It's really really cool. I worked with them when I was at Century Media. That was why I was a, that was. That was, oh, okay. that was why I, that's where I pulled that one from. Yeah. Yeah. I was going through all the girl fronted bands at Century Media and I'm like the heavy one, Arch Enemy. Yeah. Yeah. They were yeah. good, man. They, were really they, good. they still are. Uh, that, that new girl. Um, they, we did a festival together in, I don't know. I'm just going to say Norway. Some, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finland, maybe. And, and she was fantastic. They all were. They all were great. Yeah. See, I had this horrible dream that I, I bought the Kiss casket. And when I died, I was buried in it and it was set up to like play the entire kiss catalog repeat <laughs> as you're dead, but there was manufacturer's glitch and it just played the elder over and over. <laughs> oh, God. All I heard was, I am just a boy. <laughs> Eternity. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Rachel, you, being the kiss geek that you are, are you uh, going to make an appearance down at creatures fest? in nashville at the end of may you gonna be around i'm not gonna be here oh okay yeah i'm uh i'm out out of town gotcha because yeah. i will be there we forgot to talk about this last week paul i will be at creatures fest um i am going to be myself and courtney 
are doing punchlines and backlines, which is we take this. We, we did actually we did yeah. talk about this, yesterday, but we talked about it at about five thirty in the morning, Friday night. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, is, is that where Jameson and Gas? Yeah, well, yeah. Gas. I don't think Jameson's yeah. going to be there, but so what okay. we do is yeah, we we take a musician who's never did stand up before. Right. So at Creatures Fest, I have to do seven minutes of kiss jokes, which is oh, nice. Be great. There you go. Perfect. Um, and uh, we have uh, Todd Kearns and uh, Zach Throne from uh, from Bruce's band doing it. So cool, yeah, awesome. That's going to be a blast. Yeah, uh, Zach they, will be great. Yeah, Zach, Zach, Wild. Who? What? No, Zach Throne. Zach Throne. Zach Throne. Oh, oh, Throne. Throne. I was Zach like, Throne. Where, where? Yeah, I don't know if you know yeah. Zach, but Zach, I would make that trip just to see Zach do stand up. Oh, cool. <laughs> he's actually, he's all playing with Ace right now because he's filling in for Phil. Yeah, that's wow. right. Oh, that's up. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, and uh, you saw, you saw Ace last night. Didn't I you, saw Ace Indy? last night. Was that yeah, at the was Greek? It? it was at the Greek. Yeah. It was Ace. It was Ace. It was Ace. Uh, it was one Ace. of my, one of my best friends in the world plays in that band, Ryan Cook. Oh, I love oh, Ryan. Yeah. Everybody loves Ryan. He's the best. Yeah. He's uh, absolute best. He, uh, it's so cool that those guys play with Gene and with Ace, yeah. you yeah. know, and being the Kiss fans that they are. Yeah. I, I said to Cook one day, I was like, man, sometimes are you just like, what the hell is going on? Is this all just like, is this yeah. all really happening? You know, you play with Gene and then he tells Ace to hire you guys and now you're an Ace's band. And it's just like, it's crazy, man. Yeah. It's no, crazy. it's great, man. It's, and you can see those, those, those shit eating grins that they have on stage are real because, yeah. like, fuck, we'd be, I'd have that same shit eating grin the whole time. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I have, an, I have an Ace Fairly tribute band. How do you think it would go for me? It's like, yeah. There you go. Rich, you can see tomorrow night at the, or uh, tonight at the whiskey. I was, li- <laughs> I was trying, to, I was going to sneak the shameless plug in for you. So it didn't sound like a shameless plug. Oh, that's great. So then you got the shameless plug in. Yeah. So but, uh, Wednesday no. night. Wednesday night. We Wednesday have night, the Viper Room, right? Yeah. The Viper Room. Yes. I say the whiskey of Viper Room. I apologize. Yeah. Wednesday uh, night, April 27th. That's the Viper right. Room. Todd Haworth is uh, joining us and doing a couple for the Fraley's Comet tunes. And that's awesome. going to be fucking awesome. So, uh, and I think, I think I'll be drinking again by then. Yeah. If I, I take will. tonight and tomorrow off, I should be recovered in time oh, to be able I to took drink. Tonight off, but I had one Keystone light in the fridge right next to me. So I figured, fuck it, whatever. A, a, a little repair beer, a fixer upper. <laughs> fixer upper. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm actually not. I am not hung over at all. I'm just exhausted. Yeah. I'm. I'm not hung over at all. I'm still drunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking ward. So. All right. Well, I'm gonna hit the outro music and. All right, man. Uh, 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 Rachel will say goodbye after uh, after we end this. Some bitch. Uh, you got anything? La- anything else to plug really quick while we're uh, running through this? Minute nope. and seconds. Buy your Skid Row Christmas balls. I don't know. That's. Like <laughs> I was, I was supposed to send that to someone like, you know, December two, 2019. Uh, Gene COVID yeah. happens. Yeah. Gene, Gene has taught you well. Paul Gargano, yeah. you can catch him and Rachel and Skid Row at M3. Yes. Um, you can catch me on the cruise to the edge. Um, boat filled with keyboards and math and frog hands. And, and a lot of men. And a lot. I am the hottest chick on Cruise to the Edge. Um, but and, and, and I, I, would, I always say I always joke about that. But their, their fans are so fucking passionate. God bless them. And I can't wait to see everybody again. Um, and of course, Wednesday night in the Viper Room, you can find us. You know, Act Nerd Halen and uh, my other band, Mike Dawson and the Smoking Kills, and a couple other great bands as well. And uh, we are off for two weeks. This one, we are both gone next week. And I am moving to Las Vegas. So next time we are with you in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Paul Gargano, Rachel Bolin, on behalf of both of them, oh, that's right. I can do this now if I do it in Gilbert's voice because I can be as, as vulgar as possible if I do it as Gilbert Gottfried. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, <laughs> what he lacks in talent, he makes up for in the cock. All right, cool. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, get it. <laughs> I get it. And I'm just uh, shaking my head in resignation. Uh, <laughs> being the corporate stooge that I am, I'm just going, no. Oh, that's so funny. But you know what the best part is? I can beep it out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>